welcome to EC Electronics. So as electronic engineers, we all want to get into the core fields of electronics. We all are looking for core companies and we also attend a lot of interviews. But most of the time we lack behind some factors or something and we cannot really give maximum of our performance in these interviews. So in this video, I'll try to give you some tips with which you can stand out in these core company interviews. Okay, so let's see the first thing. So the first tip is that when you're going to attend any particular company interview, you should be knowing enough things about the particular company. You should be knowing all their products, all their services, all the area of their workings and the products they actually create. Okay, so you should be knowing all these things. Why? Because the employer should be really interested in knowing that whether the candidate is having enough knowledge about their firm or the candidate is really interested in working with them or not. Because if you are really interested, you should be having enough knowledge about the firm, right? So you should be doing a lot of research work about the particular firm in which you are going to give the interview. This is very important because the employers would love to hear about themselves. Okay, so please do enough research work for the company or about the company in which you are going to give the interview. The second tip is to study the basics of some of the programming softwares at least. I am talking about very basic programming softwares like uh, Silynx or MATLAB or LabVIEW. So these are actually some uh, softwares which are very basic and also some uh, microcontroller programming if possible. Why? Because uh, you are studying all the theory things in your college but the interviewer is actually looking for whether you are eligible to get into the firm or into the working location or into the working condition. So you should be knowing at least the basics of these softwares. You should be at least knowing that which all softwares are being used for which all programmings. Okay, so I'm not telling you to download the software and start studying. Try to see some tutorials or some tutorial videos in which you should be getting to know about at least the basic structure of the softwares, which all uh, things are present, which all elements are present. You should be knowing that. Okay, try to learn at least MATLAB or some uh, programming of the microcontroller there are various microcontrollers and processors right so you should, you should be at least knowing that how the programming flow is okay not the programming i'm talking about you should be knowing the softwares okay so these are the second tips the third tip is to study some basic programming languages so as electronics people we have some programming languages which are very important throughout our curriculum or in our uh, area okay like the hardware description languages like VHDL or Verilog or there is LabVIEW, there is MATLAB, then embedded C is there. So these are actually softwares and also all the microcontroller programming and microprocessor programming languages. Okay, so these are actually languages which we, we come across or we study during the, the curriculum or in our academic life. So you should be knowing the basics of these software languages, sorry, these languages also. Okay. So again, I'm telling you to study the flow of the program, how the program is having a basic structure, what are the basic elements, how the program we uh, do in order to do a very simple programming. So you should be knowing at least the basics. Okay, so that is very essential. I'm telling you 100% it will be useful if you study it because the interviewers are looking for candidates ready to put into a working environment. If you have that capabilities, then you are selected. So third tip is to study the programming languages. I'm not telling you to study all the programmings, study the basics. Okay. The fourth tip is actually the thing we all do. That is studying about the basic components. Okay. So this is the fourth tip. You should study all the basic components and their working in a way that you should be ready to explain it to another person in very simple words. Consider you are going to explain about transistor. I'm not telling you to uh, start with there is an emitter, there is a base, there is a collector. You should be explaining all these things, but in a way very simple. The interviewer may feel that you have the real confidence or real idea about a transistor. Okay, so try to be ready to explain it in very simple words so that the next person can understand that this is actually a transistor. So try to be that confident Try to learn it in a way that is you should be that confident. Okay, so that is the fourth tip. Try to study all basic components like transistors, SCRs, xenodiodes, diodes, all the things. Okay, so 
So all basic components you should be knowing. Because most of the times the interviewers won't be really interested in asking you all the rocket science, but will be interested in knowing that whether you know the basics. Okay, so basics are very important. I'm uh, constantly repeating the term basics. Why? Because it is actually very important. Okay, so you should be knowing the basic components. The fifth tip is that it's actually the most important one I would like to stress on. See, we have studied a lot of subjects in our uh, engineering life, actually. Actually, we have studied a lot of subjects, right? And out of these subjects, some are the core subjects like DSP is there, network is there, control system is there, then digital electronics is there, analog electronics is there. So all these subjects we have studied and we call them core subjects. And when you are actually going for an interview, you should try to prepare about the practical application of these subjects. Not just going uh, when you're going for an interview, but actually you should be knowing that, see, we have studied these subjects, but what are the real applications of these subjects? Like DSP, why, where we use DSP? I'll tell you a small scenario. So we have studied all these subjects, right? But what are the practical applications of these subjects? You should be knowing. Consider that DSP. If somebody is asking you, what is the practical application or what is the application of DSP? What will be your answer? Just think, taking a moment, just think. I'll tell you, see, we know that everything around us is analog, right? But we cannot really process these analog signals like temperature measurement or pressure measurement. We cannot really process these analog signals. So what we do, we measure them using some sensors. We convert them to digital and then we process them, right? So these are actually digital signals which we process, but they are actually corresponding to the analog quantity like temperature or pressure. Okay, so that is one application of DSP for data acquisition in order to measure the pressure or to use the pressure measurement or to monitor it. We actually convert them to digital form and then process it. So if you if somebody is asking you DS, about the application of DSP from today onwards, you can say that data acquisition systems use DSP as a major part because it is all about digital signals. Okay. So that is one application of DSP. Just like that, other subjects also have practical applications like control systems. In a, a production company, there are various plants and various uh, turbines and everything. I'm not, I'm just using some words like plants and turbines because there are some systems, okay, some controlling, uh, some production systems. So in order to control these production systems, we can use the control system subjects or its applications we can use. Or next one is networking. So we know everything is about network when it is coming to electricity and the wirings and everything. They are actually networks, right? So that is an application of network. Just like that, all the important subjects we study or all the subjects we study have practical applications. So you should be aware about the practical applications of these subjects. If not about all subjects, but at least about the core subjects. Okay, so that is the fifth tip, which actually I want to stress on is to study the practical applications of your subjects. If you have not yet think about it, start thinking about it from today. Okay, so that is the fifth tip. Sixth tip is actually talking about a subject which is called computer networking or computer network. See, somehow I feel that this computer network subject is a very favorite subject of all the interviewers because all interviewers would ask at least one question from this subject. They would be interested in knowing that whether you know about LAN network, MAN network, WAN network or whether you know the OSI model, TCP IP model and also whether you know how to obtain the IP address from a computer. So these are actually coming under the computer networking. Okay. So this area is actually a favorite area of all the interviewers or all the interviews. So whenever I have went for an interview, I had to face these type of questions like try to explain about the TCP IP model, try to explain about the WAN connection or try to explain about the IP address of a computer or what is IP protocol. So all these things are actually very important when it comes to interviews because somehow, as I said, is a favorite area of all the interviewers. Okay, especially if it is a networking company, then you can face a lot of questions from this area. So that is the next tip that is studying about the computer network or the computer networking subject. Again, I'm not telling you to study from all your textbooks, start studying from your textbooks, 
but try to see some videos or go through some articles okay some basic things so that is the next step the last step is always be ready to face practical problems or puzzles consider an interviewer is asking you to design an elevator which stops only on odd floors that is in one uh, number one floor in third floor in fifth floor likewise so this is a practical problem right so i'm just giving you a small example these type of practical scenarios will be given to you and you will be asked to write a small programming structure which can solve these puzzles or these scenarios it can be about some uh, real time scenarios or some other things okay so some puzzles will be given to you you have to give the solutions so this while asking these type of questions or these type of things the interviewer is actually looking for the problem solving skill in you okay so always be ready to answer some of these type of questions again i'm telling you i had to face these type of question whenever i had went for interviews so always be ready to solve these type of puzzles or real time scenarios and try to give solve solutions for these these scenarios okay so always ready to solve puzzles or real time scenarios so that is the last step so these are actually some things which you have to think if you want to really stand out in these core company interviews so the normal thing like studying from the textbooks or going through some mcq questions so these are the things which all people do but if you want to stand out start thinking about these things okay so in this video we have seen some tips for the core company interview preparations and these tips i'm sure that will help you to stand out in the interviews and the interviewers will really notice you okay so i'm really hoping that you found the video useful if yes please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching